Today we're going to talk about the European debt crisis and we're going to talk about credit default swaps. Reason being, it's early November 2011 and I'm getting more questions about Greece than anything else. And the question being, of course, why is it that this tiny country is so impacting upon our financial markets? Now, it's really a two-part answer. And the first part, I think, is relatively easy. And that is just by nature of the fact that Greece is part of the Eurozone. If Greece were to completely fall out of bed, were to fall out of the Euro and to default on that half a trillion plus uh, worth of debt and leave European banks ha uh, hanging, so to speak, and, and worse yet, if that were to spill over into Italy and Spain and Portugal, Italy in particular, then we have a big, big problem. Now, when you look at the Eurozone, collectively, those countries are the world's largest economy. They are our largest trading partner, and they are China's largest trading partner. Now, they are, they are just a little bit less than 25% of GDP, globally speaking, but they're still, they're still a big deal, particularly when you consider you know, the trade implications. So, um, so that, if you just leave it there, that explains a lot of why our markets can be so volatile on news coming out of Europe. But let's talk about this credit default swap. You've probably heard that term before. Uh, CDS or credit default swap and you might be wondering what, how that works or what that means. It's not the most complicated of subjects but it can be very complicated in terms of its application so I want to talk about it just briefly here and just just so going forward you have an understanding of what they're talking about when you hear this in the news. Okay, So let's, um, let's pretend for a moment that you represent a bank in France and we'll call you therefore FB or French Bank. Okay, You have this member over here of your of your currency if you will a eurozone member uh, this country we'll call g or greece okay now uh, you're you're familiar with that country of course you know how they spend money and so on but um but yeah and you know that they're in the business of lending and of course you're i'm sorry of borrowing and you're in the business of lending now um you also know that greece may not be the greatest risk in the world but um but you're going to go ahead and lend them some money anyway. Okay. Now, when they became part of the euro, they you know, there's this implicit assurance that you know that, that maybe they have some backing that they didn't used to have, and therefore interest rates aren't quite as high as they were before they entered the euro. But but nonetheless, um, they 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 you know it's they're they're a, they're a reasonable risk you think at least when you get started. So you lend them, and let's just do it. Let's say a billion dollars. Maybe I could use a larger number, but we'll just do this for the sake of math. And let me just use a nice round interest rate of 10%, uh, purely hypothetical. Okay. Um, now again, knowing Greece as you do, and knowing that you just handed over a billion dollars for 10 years and in, in return for $100 million a year of interest, you're still a little worried. You know, it could happen. They could, they could get kicked out of the euro, or they could, they could fall out somehow. So you're thinking, you know what, I think I better get some protection. So let's go over here and let's see if there's, if there's anybody over here across the water that might be willing to uh, protect that risk for us. And we'll call that one U.S. Bank. And sure enough, U.S. Bank is in the business currently, at least at the time of my, my diagram here, of, uh, of insuring Greek debt. And they, they do it with an instrument called a credit default swap. Okay, So the way it works is that bank gives a premium or pays a premium to um, to U.S. Bank and we'll just say 1%. Let's just say that they're charging 100 basis points or 1% on a billion dollars of Greek debt. So, um, so, so if you say, French Bank says, okay, yeah, you know what, let's net 9% and let's give them 1% and let's get a contract that says if Greece indeed does default on what they owe us, that U.S. Bank will pay us our billion dollars. And folks, that's how it works. That's a credit default swap. It's an insurance policy. Uh, this, this entity lends this money, this, uh, lends money to this entity. They pay them an interest rate. They pay them a premium. They insure it so if they go bust, they end up paying. Okay. So that gives you another idea why we might get a little nervous when things aren't going so well over here in Greece. Okay. Well, now you would think, right? You would think that U.S. Bank would never insure a billion dollars of Greece debt without having at least that much in reserves, just in case it were to happen, right? So hold that thought. Okay. 
Now let's uh, let's add another wrinkle to it. Okay, this let's add another entity over here. We'll call this one hedge fund or HF. Okay, hedge fund is in the business of combing the world for opportunities to exploit. Okay, and they see that Greece is having problems. In fact, they are speculating perhaps even that Greece ain't gonna make it. That Greece's situation has deteriorated to the point where they just may not even survive and they may indeed go into default. Okay? So they would like to capitalize on that. So obviously they're not going to lend money Greece and they're not going to invest money in Greece, but they sure would like to have a piece of that, that insurance if there's any way to do that. And in fact there is. They can actually buy, believe it or not, they can buy a credit default swap on Greece's debt because U.S. Bank at the time of this illustration is still issuing them. Okay. Now, as I suggested, the situation has deteriorated which has made hedge funding interested. Therefore, the cost of the CDS covering Greek debt has gone up a bunch. Let's just say it's gone up to 500 basis points or let's say 5%. Okay, so, um, let's see, I'm sorry. So they're going to give the CDS worth a billion dollars, or the insurance policy worth a billion dollars contract. So they're going to do that with a hedge fund in return for 5%. So on a billion dollars, that would be $50 million a year. So a hedge fund is poning up the money. Perhaps they're borrowing it from somewhere or leveraging something else to get it, but they're betting on Greece's demise. Okay? Now, there are folks in Europe that actually blame, believe it or not, the whole CDS concept for Europeans or for the European debt crisis for their woes. They would contend that there are speculators that have so much to gain by a failure, right, of in, in this example Greece, that they will do things like, like a short sovereign debt the, to drive up interest rates to make it difficult for them to survive so that they would indeed fail, so that they would indeed prosper. Now from what I, from what I understand, there isn't a lot of, of evidence supporting that notion. And of course, it's one thing to borrow and spend as irresponsibly as you can imagine and getting yourself into this fix. And it's quite another to go ahead and blame some financial um, you know, concept or derivative for your, for your woes. Um, so again, not that those th sorts of things don't happen in the world, but the idea that they could bring down a whole country, they certainly couldn't if the country was in good shape. So, so anyway, so, um, so folks, but let's bring this back home though. Here we have U.S. Bank, in my example, who has issued insurance against a Greek default to this French bank, in my example, and to the hedge fund, and Lord knows where else. Could be other uh, banks, could be pension funds, etc. So, uh, have you ever heard the initials AIG? Well, AIG did this in a huge way uh, leading up to the 2008 credit crisis. In fact, they had billions on top of billions on top of billions of credit default swap exposure, and they did not have billions on top of billions on top of billions of assets to back all that exposure. It's not a regulated product, it's not an insurance policy from a regulatory perspective, and therefore there aren't these requirements like there would be insurance policies that you hold the assets and so on. So what do we get now? We get regulation. So there's talk of um, of outlawing, by the way, this is called a naked default swap because there's no relationship between here and here, so, so let's outlaw naked default swaps. Uh, let's create an exchange perhaps where CDSs are traded, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Let's require you know, banks to have capital you know, with which to back the, the credit default swaps and all that, and, and again, of course, all that sounds wonderful but it does mean bigger government, more regulations, and so on. I just wish, and, it, and it's, it's one thing to wish because it isn't going to happen, but I, I'll say it anyway. I wish we could, we could turn the clock back 50 years and stop the, that, that first bailout. And I, I don't know that the first one was 50 years ago, but, but even if we go back 50 years and stop bailing out companies. Okay, if, if there wasn't some, albeit subconscious, belief that, hey, we're so systemically important, that, that we don't have to worry about ever you know, going to zero because there's the printing press and the politicians whom we've um, supported or whatever um, won't let that happen. We can, we can take substantial risk because it really there's just nothing in our subconscious that tells us that we, we're, we would ever lose, right? But what if, what if we thought we could lose? What if we thought we could? Well then, first of all, I don't see the fault in French bank lending money to Greece 
as long as they can insure it. But the problem is, so, so maybe they did their due diligence enough to know to go out and buy the, buy the insurance. But what they didn't do is they didn't do the due diligence here necessarily, in, in this example, or certainly we go back to AIG, to make sure that, that the assets are there. See, in, in a world where, where loss is allowed, then, of course, French Bank would have dug deep into the financials of U.S. Bank. They would have required full disclosure. They would have wanted to see all the other CDS exposure. They, wanted to know, they would have wanted to know for sure that, uh, that those assets were there to bank up that insurance policy. You know what? They never would have done the loan to Greece, who is now looking at, at never being able to pay their bills. So, um, so folks, I am, um, just, just for what it's worth, uh, I think we need to move more toward you know, free markets, profit and loss systems, where, where loss, which is really the lubricant to an efficient market, is allowed to happen. I am heartened, though, by, because last week, um, albeit a small company relative to, uh, to Wall Street standards, one being MF Global, uh, had to file bankruptcy. They, uh, their, uh, their company, they, their, their execs or executive, levered up that company and their, their portfolio some for, on a 40 to 1 basis on what? Sovereign debt in Europe. And um, now they just couldn't last long enough with that much leverage to actually see this thing to its end. By the time people began to see what was going on there, everything came crumbling down. And uh, consequently, guess what? The taxpayer isn't jumping in to bail anybody out. The people that invested in that with MF Global are ultimately going to have to pay the price of, of making that mistake. And then, and then, believe me, the next time they or somebody else will, by that example, won't be as egregious, won't be as greedy, won't be as risky with their money. And that, folks, is uh, beyond today's lesson. So I guess I'll stop that there. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. I hope now you understand CDS. Um, if not, if you need more, just, just ask me a question or put a comment in the comment section. And um, the blog is betweenthelines.us. And again, have a great day. Thanks for watching.